Jesus name we pray I give thanks to you Almighty Father because you are sending your word out to fight for us against the enemy a God I'm requesting the word of God will liberate your people in Jesus mighty name thank you father in Jesus name we pray in the book of Psalms Psalms 103 verse 17 to verse 22 fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he severed them out of their distresses. Verse 20, let's read it together. One, two, go. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing now actually we have hurt our god as christians and that has made him to leave us in the hands of the enemy to oppress us but as we seek his face the God of heaven seeing our repentance has is sending forth his word we believe his word and the word of God will deliver us from the destruction the enemy has determined against us I want you to know the word coming out from this place coming out from his servant is sent by God to set you free to set his own people free to fight our battles for us in Jesus name therefore be very careful with the devil who will not want you to hear the word by bringing out various kinds of allegations misrepresentations so that the servant of the Lord will now become no more precious to you but an, ab an abominable person. That's Satan. That's his tactics. Don't listen to the devil. There's righteousness with the servant of God in the eyes of God. So do not allow the devil to play politics over your life, religious politics, to doom your soul. Keep on receiving the word with gladness and enjoy the salvation that the Lord has in his world for his own people I'm speaking to you on God will take over the war against our enemies can we say it say it again the last time exactly God will take over the war against our enemies. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 1. The full chapter. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, 
there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tama, which is Dingedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over, the, over all the kingdoms of the hidden? And in thine hand is there not power? And mind, so that none is able to withstand thee. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people, Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein, for thy name saying, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Monsia, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, will not thou judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. For the battle is not yours, but God's. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And I say, God will take over the war against our enemies. Every kind of battle that comes our way, battle upon the battle, upon battle, upon battle, war, the Lord shall take over all in Jesus' name. In the days of King Jehoshaphat, the man that feared the Lord and served him in righteousness. Some three nations came against him and against his kingdom, Judah and Jerusalem, for war. He resorted to prayer and had perfect victory over his enemies. Perfect victory was earned not by power of man not by weapons of war but by faith and prayer that is what the lord is calling us in whatever threatening situation we find ourselves whatever voice we are hearing in jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 to verse 14 jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 to verse 14 see it the world for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace 
and not of evil to give you an expected end then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart and i will be found of you saith the lord and i will turn away your captivity and i will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither i have driven you saith the lord and i will bring you again into the place wherein i caused you to be carried away captive the lord is saying his plan for his people is a good plan the plan for christians for believers in this country is a good plan we are thinking good thoughts for ourselves the lord said yes i want to satisfy that thought i want to work it out for you i want to bless you with your wish your wishes but then go and pray go and look to me lift up your eyes to me and call upon me i'm going to hear your prayer i'm going to accept what you will say to me yes and you shall seek me seek me seek me and find me when i see that you have searched for me with all your heart you are sincere about it calling on me you are sincere about it crying unto me you are sincere about it yes you are sincere and he said i will be found of you and turn away your captivity i will be found of you and turn away your captivity i want to give you this story in the month of february this year i was in taraba state and in my local government and around my people they could tell people the lord in the afternoon in in the afternoon while our mommy linda slept took her to a place and reveal to her the wicked plan of the enemies against the Kutte tribe. It says, see what the enemy has planned against the Kutte tribe. And I know that the Kutte tribe has no one to defend them. No one. But I want you, tell them that they should repent of their sins and call on me. I will fight for them. They have no strength at all. They have no strength at all to face the battle that is coming on them. The battle that is coming on them will wipe them out as, in, as a whole tribe. So they should seek my face. When she woke up in the afternoon, I was sitting by her bed because I was preparing the message for the crusade of that day. Right in my father's house that we... Uh, were there for this, this crusade then she said see what the lord has told me he has said this he has said this he said i should declare it to the people they should seek his face so when i saw this i knew it was reality i knew it was truth i did a lot to evangelize that tribe i did much i spent a lot of money because i knew the lord has spoken if we did nothing my tribe would be gone if we did nothing so well to give you a brief thing can't, i won't go too far just about maybe three weeks ago or it's not up to one month i suppose the, a great deliverance came over my tribe great deliverance the fulani people the enemy came to destroy our land Somebody said there were about 3,000 full and it well armed. They came to clear the place. But how God worked it that it became a war between them and soldiers that came over from two states to handle them 
I was told that there was exchange of gunshots for four hours with the Fulani people. I was told that maybe how many soldiers died, is it up to seven, up to what, died in that war. Soldiers made up their mind to clear them out of that environment. Hallelujah. It's the power of God. It's answer to prayers. Answer to prayers. It's the Lord saw it. He knew it. Your enemies are planning. You cannot stand the enemy. There are details inside this thing. But this is what happened. Now my people are peaceful. They who could not sleep in the night. The young ones who were moving up and down. What ammunition do they even have to say we'll defend our land? Nothing. But God took over because he said, if you repent and call on me, I will take over. If you refuse, you, are you, you will be wiped out. Thank God, great evangelistic work was done. There was repentance among my people. I was told they went into three days fasting, seeking the face of the Lord. Now the Lord has given them the victory. The Lord has given them the victory. Praise the Lord! The same thing the Lord is saying concerning this nation. Now, you see it here. That is what it says. I know the thought. You have been looking for political peace. I know it in this nation. My children, you are looking for unity. You want to settle well. Call on me. Ask me. Seek my face. And I will work it out for you. Every way you are in captivity, I will lose you from your captivity. In Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 12 to verse 16. It says, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turned from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Can you see what the Lord is saying? Whatever is the problem that come, I allowed that problem to come. Whichever enemy arise, I allowed them to arise. Whatever noise you are hearing, I allowed them to bring the noise unto you. Because of your sin, because of your evil, your, because of your wickedness. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves. You were proud. That's why I allow those things to come on your way. If then you can humble yourselves and pray. You were prayerless. That is why I allow those things to come. I was not hearing you people anymore. I was not your target. I was not your concern. I was not your object of worship. You never see me as one that could give you help. That's why I allow the enemy to come. You are not focusing on me if you would pray and seek my face because you went into sin. You're living in sinful pleasure. You don't bother about my life. That's why I gave you up to those enemies. If you will now repent, if you seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, the evils you do in the church, the evil you do one denomination against another denomination. One minister against another minister. If you repent of these things, then will I hear from heaven. I'm going to hear you right from heaven. Your prayers will come. But now your prayer doesn't come because of your sins. Your prayer doesn't come 
because of your evil. But if you turn away from your sins and evil, your prayers will reach heaven. And I will forgive their sins. I will forgive your sin and will heal their land. I will settle the problem that is in the land. That is what the Lord is saying. All these things we are hearing in our country, God will settle everything. If we see him, if we seek him, if we pray to him, if we practice righteousness one towards another, then we will see the Lord do wonders. For he said, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attain unto the prayer that is made. In this place, prayer made in the church of God. God is ready as long as we repent of our sins. Yes, God has helped us. Holiness Revival Movement. We are leading a team of people to reconciliation. To reconcile Christians together. To bring, the, to bring believers, the body of Christ together in truth, in holiness, in love, in Christian unity. So the churches, the church of Christ should be one, whichever denomination uh, it is called by, whatever name it is called by. We, God is using us to bring, to restore people to righteousness and holiness. Bless God. That's what the Lord is doing. To restore people in righteousness and holiness. When we were in Taraba for the minister's uh, conference of uh, Believers' unity in doctrine and holy living. The last day of the conference, the Lord spoke and said, I, ha I decided to keep quiet and say nothing concerning the oppression Christians are passing through in this nation because their fathers have forsaken me. Fathers, talking about the general overseers, general... Um, bishop, uh, the bishop, the general superintendents, the senior pastors, church founders. He said, these people forsook me and led the people away from me. I decided to keep quiet and allow them suffer. And that's why Christianity has been suffering in this country. But now that I have seen a people come up, I've seen unity coming, come up, I've seen people willing to obey me, willing to do my will. I cannot help but come to the salvation of my people. I must reveal to you the plan of the enemy in this country. See, your enemies have planned great battle. In fact, they have planned that there will be no worship. Churches will never worship in this country. That's what the almighty God spoke to us the other week. Churches will not worship in this country. They have planned great battle. Now, I tell you, my children, call me, pray to me, ask of me, and I will come and take over. Commit to me the election of next year committed unto me ask me to take over the government of this nation ask me to take over the election ask me to turn the wicked plans of the enemy against themselves and I will do it ah praise, praise, praise the Lord then we decided that we are truly going to seek the face of God. We have planned for prayers that will start out from the month of June all through to next year until after the election. We are committing this nation to God. We are committing the election to God. We are committing the plan of the enemy to God. Praise the Lord. Listen, it was after I had had this that I came to hear and read it and listened to it myself, maybe yesterday, that the terrorists have sent in a letter. As the Inspector General of Police was reading this thing, I had it, I saw it yesterday, that for a particular period to come within this year, Christians should never go to a place of worship for three months. They are warning Christians. 
that for the, for the period of three months, they are saying no person should gather in a place of worship. Wonderful. This thing the Lord told us is as clear as this. So, the people, are, as the man, the man was reading this thing, said, well, this may be mere trade, or it may be reality, they don't know, but that the police force is going, he is going to organize the police, they're going to take care of this, they're going to take care of this, they will go to the mocks on Friday, and uh, during worship, they will take care of uh, uh, the Christians in their worship. I just, I said, if all the police were asked to come to Abuja, to go to churches, the churches that are in Abuja alone, how many policemen can one church get? So, it is not a matter that is of the arms of flesh, that you can rely on police, rely on soldiers, rely on a people you do not really know their mixture. It is not these people. It is the Lord. Everybody say, it is the Lord which I rely upon. Say it again. Now, let the devil hear. Christianity have come again together. The Lord is working it. Already the foundation has been laid. We are building upon this foundation. There's going to be unity now. Many are repenting and are coming to righteousness. Many churches are imbibing true gospel, true doctrine, to preach true doctrine. Many are cleaning themselves of Jezebelic dressing. Many are settling themselves and we shall continue this walk. The Lord shall walk with us. The Lord shall establish righteousness in this nation and outside nations. In Jesus' name. And then our Lord shall take over. He left us to your hands because we sinned against him. He left Christianity to your hand to our praise because we were stubborn. Our church founders turned the people to go after holy water, go after sand, go after anointing oil, to go after miracles from demons. And they turned the people to human worship. The attention was no more on Jesus, but on themselves. And that provoked the Lord. That's why the Lord allowed our enemies to rule over us. But now he said, he has even seen righteousness springing up among us. Now he's very happy. He said, we should pray that you handle you. The Lord shall handle you. The creator of this world shall show himself. We, he shall show who is greater, you or the creator. The creator said he is arising against you. The creator said he's going to deal with you. The creator said he's going to make you blind. The creator said he's going to pour sicknesses upon your body. The creator said he's going to raise up enemy to crush you. The creator said he's going to deliver his children. The creator said he's going to uplift his children. The creator said he will bring peace to our nation. Everybody say praise the Lord. That is it. Now, the trade of wars. Look at it again in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to verse 3. And see the trade of war. It came to pass after this also... That the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There came a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazaz on Tamar, which is Ingedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Can you see the trade that Jehoshaphat had received? Jehoshaphat had the message of war, of battle, that the enemies had planned war against him and had already gathered together. He was afraid. He was afraid. It's normal. The traits of the enemies are like that. They will speak. If you hear Satan talk, you will think that he has power over God. He has power over all the angels. He has power over all beings. He is the supreme. 
if you hear the voice of Satan. If when Goliath spoke, the children of Israel ran. It was David that came and said, let nobody run because of this man. Let nobody's heart fail him because of this man. Because it might be with this information given to Christians in this country, some people are afraid now. Hey, I'm going to leave this country. I'm going to do this. Let nobody's heart fail him. Wonders and miracles, we shall see it together. Yeah. Hallelujah. I say we shall see wonders. In this country, we shall see the miracles of victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Goliath that has spoken, it is his head you shall see next time. It is his head that you shall see next time. That is the voice of our God. Therefore, we don't need to be afraid. Jehoshaphat. Now, what did he do? Jehoshaphat. What did he do? Because he was afraid. His, the, number one. He and his people knew the intention of these people. To drive them out of the land of Judah and Jerusalem. Look at it in verse 11. And behold, behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. Can you see the aim, the aim of the devil? The aim of our enemy. Drive away Christians from this country. Possess their possession. But God gave us this country. I asked somebody, who was the first president of this country? Who was the first president? Who was the next? Who was the third? How long had God given this country to us? How long? How long? That now we became a stranger? We should be dispossessed of gov governing this country? We should be dispossessed of taking pleasure in this country which God gave to, to us? Of course it is to all people he created whether Christians or not yes but then whom will God focus more whom will God focus more his children or children of strangers so we should take note of this but now they said get out from this place that's what the Jehoshaphat said get out of Jerusalem the city of the great king get out of this country headquarters of Christianity in the world God has decided to raise Christianity up and given it so give the present headquarters is in this country, Nigeria. Get we get out. Then what happens to God? What happens to the plan of God? What happens to the Creator? What happens to Jesus, the Lord of heaven and the earth? Who can move Jesus out of this country? He met in the headquarters of the world, the Christian world. The rapture will carry many people from this country. This country is going to influence the whole world. And his last revival is beginning from this country. This is the voice of revival. I said this is the voice of revival. Our great God is about doing a new thing. I say our great God is about doing a new thing in this nation. Let the devil make noise and then silence her forever. Glory to our God. That is it. So, you see, what Jehoshaphat did, you, why he, he was afraid? Because he knew the intention of the enemy. Number two, they had no military power, no might, to fight against the approaching enemies. No. Look at it in verse 12. He said, Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no mind against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. So you see, we have no mind. They have no military power. The Christians have no military power. No, there's no army called the army of Christians, except the angels. No human being. No, Christ, no Christian, no church hurt by me is raising up any military force. None. Even if a church, a denomination were doing it, 
how many would they raise up where was the money to get the weapons of war so none jehoshaphat told the lord we have no mind we have no power against this great plan of our enemy against this great wickedness of our enemy coming against us we don't have number three he and his people did not know what to do over this great battle coming against them see what he said oh our god will thou not judge them for we have we have no might against this great company that coming against us neither know we what to do we don't know what to do we don't know where to go can we run out of this country because enemies are coming lord is that what to do do we run to the bush and to the mountains because the enemies are coming god is that what to do do we now say look for military assistance call to other lands other nations that they should come in and help us is that what to do oh lord we don't even know what to do we're confused i see the battle their mission is for months now see the battle we don't know what to do and again number four he said our eyes are upon you their eyes were on the lord look at it again in verse 12 Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Everybody look up to heaven. Let your eyes be upon the Creator. Let your eyes be upon Jesus the Lord, the one that came down from heaven and died for us on the cross of Calvary. That he might raise up a people of righteousness and holiness to serve the Lord. He prayed to the Father. He prayed to the Father. I pray not that thou shouldest take them from the earth. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Lord, you are still there. Everlasting Lord, everlasting Savior. We are waiting for you how we can remain in our country. Because you have asked the Father that we should remain on the earth. To do your will until the day when you will take us home oh lord our eyes are upon you we our wives and our children amen that is all that is did. all they did and all judah stood before the lord with their little ones their wives and their children yes yeah. I say threats are often like this, coming from the enemy. For the, the Bible says, the devil, your adversary, is a roaring lion. He roars. What is he? Give up, surrender, or I swallow you. When the, when the lion roars, all animals stand still. The power of that voice causes all animals. To stand still and surrender. Which of us is he aiming at? We surrender. The roaring of the devil is that we should surrender. But what saith our God? Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7 from verse 1. I read verse 1 all through to verse 11. And it came to pass. And in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezan, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Syria was a neighboring nation. The tribe of, Jew, of Israel, the 12 tribes, had now been divided into two. Ten tribes formed a nation in Samaria. Two tribes formed a nation in Judah, Jerusalem. That's the tribe 
of Israel. Israel and Judah. And these have separate kings over them. In Judah, it is Ahaz that was ruling in Jerusalem. Well, in Samaria, Rezin, I'm mean, sorry, in Samaria, Pekah was ruling in Samaria, the ten tribes. So, Pekah and, the, and Syria, Syria is another nation, but neighboring. They gang up together and say they will go and fight Jerusalem. The southern kingdom. They will fight the Jerusalem and take over the kingship of Jerusalem. They came at first. It didn't work. They tried. It didn't work. Whom did they make? All this threat. Is it beginning now? What about the other threats? Is it the first time we're hearing threats? Is it the first time enemy is preparing, has prepared himself for battle? Have they not been preparing all this while? Has he succeeded all these years? Have they succeeded? They met with, the, with angels from heaven. They met with horse that the Lord kept round Judah and Jerusalem. They tried, it didn't work. Now, they sent information. And the information came to Ahaz. In verse 2. And it was told the house of David. Ahaz, the king, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And he it's that is Syria has planted up with Samaria, which they call Ephraim, the other ten tribes. They, can call, they are also called Ephraim. Syria is confederate with Ephraim. When he had this, his heart was moved. And the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood, are moved with the wind. Just like it is happening now in this country. When people hear Eh? They say we should not go to church. Hey, eh? the heart will move. Heart of ministers, heart of pastors, heart of church elders, heart of church, heart of Christians will move and shake like the wind blowing on the branches of trees. The Lord saw it and sent His word, as He's sending His word to you now. The Lord saw it. Verse 3. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Jashit, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, in the highway of the fuller's field. You will meet him there. Go and say unto him, Take it and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted. For the two tails of this smoking fire brands. Fire is on them already. For the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and of the son of Ramalia. Go and tell Ahab that I say, be careful. You are serving the living God. Don't be afraid. Let not your heart fail. Tell your people, let not your heart fail. Be very careful. You are serving the mighty God. You are serving the living God. All this, the tales of this smoking, uh, this, this smoking wood. These two kings. You are hearing their voice and you are, you are bothering. You are hearing their voice and you think that life is over for you. Hey, our nation shall be destroyed. Hey, we shall die. Keep quiet. That was God talking to them. That was God talking to them. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabil. They have picked the son of Tabil, that they will kill you, Uzziah, destroy everything, and they set the son of Tabil over, over, over Jerusalem. Whom I have not chosen. Which, which is not from the lineage of David my son. Take out and be careful with that. Don't be afraid of those things. Don't be afraid. For 
Thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Shout it! Shout it! That as uh, a terrorist said, you should not worship for three days. The Lord will smite them out. The Lord will crush them down. It shall not happen. It shall not come to pass. Who are they? Who come? Who is man? Who is man? What is any other religion? What power do they have? What authority? We have greater authority. The one that shakes the earth, the mountains will shake, the sea will shake, the sky will drop down. He is our God. He is our Lord. How will you be summoning Jesus and you're afraid? How? God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus shout everything that remains. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what God wants you to know. That's what God wants you to understand. Yes, come back to Jehoshaphat's story. They really came to the right place. Their eyes were upon the Lord. Yes, their eyes were upon the Lord. Yes. Now, what is the Lord saying? Don't be afraid. Fear not what you have heard. It shall not happen. Don't be afraid. The Lord shall take over the war. The Lord shall take over the battle. The battle is not yours, but God's. Now, what was the confession of Jehoshaphat? Our eyes are upon you. That is the confession of faith. Let all of us trust in the Lord. Let all our, of us believe in the Lord. Believe what the Lord has said. Our eyes, our faith, our confidence, our boasting, our confession is upon the Lord. Not upon security of men and government. Which cannot be trusted. In these days, many come in uniform of soldiers, but they are not soldiers. Many come in the uniform of policemen, but they are not policemen. If you trust on arms of flesh, you will fall into their hands and think that you have gotten security. Our security is in God. Hallelujah! Your security lies in the hand of God. You will run to God and not run to man. Yes. That is what the Lord is saying. Our eyes must not be on man. Nor on the government of man. But on God. On God alone. In Psalm 20. Verse 6. And 7. Psalm 20. Verse 6. And seven. The Bible says. Now I know. That the lost servant is anointed. Listen. Some of you will be wondering. Why is pastor speaking like this? I am the anointed of God. <laughs> Give a clap offering to Jesus. I am the anointed of God. The Lord will serve me. The Lord will serve me. The Lord will serve me. I must speak the word of faith to you. The Lord will save my life. Glory to God! Yes. Now I know that the Lord's servant is anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the seven strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Call that name. 
Jesus. 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 Those people trust in horses and chariots. The Bible says it's a, they are broke down and fallen. You will see them brought down. With their guns and grenades and bombs and all. You will see them lie flat and get rotten. Fly shall fly over their body. They are brought down and falling. But we are risen and stand upright as the sheep of Joseph. As the sheep of Joseph. We shall stand upright. Yeah. Save Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 5 to 8. Trust in God, you will be saved. Trust in God, you will be delivered. Trust in God, you will have peace. Yes, the Bible says, verse 5 to 8, Jeremiah chapter 17. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man. That trusted in man and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Verse 7 Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. If you put your trust in man. In the power of man. <laughs> they are telling you lies. In the power of man. When the trouble comes. Where the policemen? They say there's no foil. No, no money to buy foil into vehicle. And run to come and save you from robbers. No foil. Is it the people you will not be trusting? Let them say. If they do it, praise God. If they don't do it, it is done already by our God. That is where our faith is. That is where our confidence is. Our God. Our God. Our God. He has been seven. His name is called Savior. That means he is the champion of salvation. He is the source of trans salvation. That's why our confidence is in him. Amen. If the doctor, a medical doctor is around and you are having some pain, some trouble, are you going to call your neighbor or you will call the doctor? I'm asking you, whom will you call? God is the doctor, the savior. It is himself we should look into, not our neighbor, not fellow human being. Yes, in Psalm 27, verse 1 to verse 3. Psalm 27, verse 1 to verse 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, what happened to them? They stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident that God is there. Thank you, Lord. That's the word of God. Now, the prayers of Jehoshaphat and his people. Hmm. We're going to examine these prayers. The prayers of Jehoshaphat and his people. 
In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 3 and chapter 20. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. I read from verse 3. From verse 3 to 13. The prayers of Jehoshaphat and his people. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. What did he do? He did the following. He turned his fears to the Lord. That's what Jehoshaphat did. He turned his fears to the Lord. That is what the Lord wants you to do. Are you afraid? You can be afraid. You are a man. But turn your fear over the Lord to the Lord. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy loving. With what? Your own case with fear. And I will give you rest. Turn that fear unto the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. So, cast your fear upon the Lord, because you may not be able to control your imaginations. Your thoughts will bring out 1,001 past experiences. Your thought will bring about what happened in other nations. Hey, these people have done like that to the other nations. These people have done like that. In fact, these people, the way I had it, they have come. They have brought armies from this. They have hired these. Your thought can be doing that. Turn your fears unto the Lord. Number two, Jehoshaphat prepared himself to seek the Lord. That means he was ready to cleanse himself and Cleanse the people. Clean yourself. And clean the people. Check up in your life. And make sure righteousness is there. As a pastor. Make sure righteousness is in the church. All these abominable dressing. That come to provoke the Lord to anger. Remove them from your church. From your congregation before the Lord. This choir dresses. Tight fitting skirt. Tight fitting blouses. To steal lust and pollute the altar. Brought it out from your people. Prepare your church. To seek the Lord. Otherwise death is hanging over the church. Prepare yourself. All this immoral life you are living with those people. Stop it. You person moving from place to place in immorality. Committing immorality with the young girls. Even looking for people's wives. You woman. Behaving like butterfly. From person to person to person to person. Stop it. Prepare yourself. To seek the Lord. Wipe out all sins. And you. In holiness revival movement. In any nation. In any state, any chapter, any unit, wipe out iniquity in that place. All these people who are at ease, stubborn to the Lord, get them out. Get them out. Let them not pollute the place and kill the people in, the, in divine wrath. He prepared himself to seek the Lord. All things in righteousness, no oppression. Don't oppress people. Don't do evil to anyone. You're stealing God's property. Stop it. You're bringing anger upon yourself and your children. Anger upon yourself and your family. Your, your brothers who are innocent shall die because of you. Prepare yourself to seek the Lord. You are interested in problem. Bring, knocking two heads together to scatter the people. Scatter the church. Your, that is what interests you. Prepare yourself. The Lord will crush you because you are evil. You are the one causing his church to murmur against each other. 
You're the one causing the church to find trouble against each other. That there be no unity. There be no peace. Prepare yourself by repentance and confession to seek the Lord. That's what Jehoshaphat did. Number three, he proclaimed a fast throughout the nation. He proclaimed a fast throughout the nation. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 verse 12 to 21. The Bible tells us a fast throughout the nation. Yes, a fast. Verse 12 of Joel chapter 2. Therefore also now, see it the Lord Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rent your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of the evil. Your enemies are vaunting they are Exercising themselves as footballers, ready to play the, play the match. They say, yeah, we'll get them. Don't look to them, look to the Lord. Because as you see them, if the Lord take away the air that they breathe, all of them shall fall down there. Flat! So look to the Lord. Rate your heart unto me. Yeah, that's what the Lord is saying. He said, God is merciful. If you seek him, if you repent, he will show you mercy. Who knew it? If he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Bring offerings. Increase your offering in the house of God. Increase your offering. Pay your tithes. Pay your tithes. Increase your offering to God to please him. We need his salvation. We need his deliverance. We need his intervention. That is what God says you should do. Blow the trumpet. In Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Let the people gather together and pray. Let the people gather together and pray. Ministers be there. Pastors be there. General overseer. Church founder. Be in the prayer meeting. Bishops. Be in the prayer meeting, senior pastors. Be in the prayer meeting. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children too. And those that suck the breast, let their mothers bring them to the, to, the, to the prayer meeting. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Yes, married men, young ones that have just married, stop enjoying men and come. You will, so you will die. You will die. You will die. Come and let the Lord serve you. Then you go and you, you live forever. Praise the Lord. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Pray with weeping between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. And give not thine heritage to reproach. That the hidden should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Oh Lord, this country, Nigeria, is the headquarters of Christianity in the world. If the enemy succeeds to stop worship here, the world will collapse. The world will collapse. Oh Lord, arise! Then, Will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people? Yeah, the Lord will answer. <laughs> I said the Lord will answer. And say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the hidden. I will remove far off from you the northern army. I will handle the north. I will handle the north. I will handle the north. 
I will crush the north. I will break down the power of the north. I will handle the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his inner part toward the utmost sea and his thing as a dead rotten man and his thing shall come up and his ill sorrow shall come up because he had done great things fear not all Lord be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things follow the Lord you will love that is the world the almighty has. So Jehoshaphat, yes, proclaimed a fast. Again, Second Chronicles chapter 20, telling you what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat, number four, exalted God, the great God, whom they served above the situation above the enemy see what he said in verse 5 2nd Chronicles 25 and Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said O Lord God of our fathers art not, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the hidden? And in thine heart is there no power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwell therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name. Can you see? God! Are you not the creator of the universe and of the ends of the earth? Are not all human beings under your power? Do they not live by the brief you gave to them? Oh Lord! Oh Lord! See! You are our God. Other people refused you. Many of your creatures rejected you. But we accepted you. We accepted you. We are called by your name. We are Jesus people. We are Jesus people. Hey, you gave us this land. You brought our fathers to this land. Then, number five, I mean, it, it showed the greatness of God. God wants you to remember his greatness. Remember his power. Because you're offending. Let the Christians remember who is this God. The great God that stretched forth the heavens. The great God that made humanity of all races. The great God that created the lion and the elephant. The great God that made the ocean. The great God that made the planets and the stars innumerable. The great God that created the winds that blow. Remember him. He is greater than man. Remember him. He is greater than Satan. He is the creator of Satan. He is greater than witches and wizards. He is the creator of witches and wizards. He is greater than all religion. He is the creator of their prophets, of their worshippers, of every kind, every, every wise man after the flesh that make it himself a, a, a leader of the people. He created them. He created them. Will you embarrass God? Can they break his order? Who gave order to the sea that they should not pass their level with all the raging wave of the sea? With all the raging waves, as the waves are coming, you will think that they will break their boundary. They come, as they approach their boundary, they say, well, our power is over. By God. Listen to what he said. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 12 and 13, Isaiah chapter 51, 
Verse 12 and 13. He said, Ah, even I, I am he that comforted you, that are telling you to be at peace. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the Son of Man who shall be made as grass, and forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that has stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and has feared continually every day? Because of the fury of the oppressor. As if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? I am God. I told you don't fear those terrorists. I will be a terror to them. I will make them out. I will squeeze them out. I will make up their guns and their weapons of war. I told you this, you're, you're fearing. I say, hey, these people. You will never see them again. You will never see them again. That is what the Lord is saying. All those people that will rise up and say they're humbling Christians to take over. The Lord shall take over them. The Lord shall take over them. He will give their lands to others. Hallelujah. So, Jehoshaphat exalted the Lord. Number five, Jehoshaphat reminded God of his promises of deliverance in times of war and battles. Look at it in verse 8. And nine of Second Chronicles, verse eight and nine, and they dwell therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If queen evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. And cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and help. That's divine promise. And God will not refuse to perform his promise. God will not refuse to perform his promise. The Lord that says, If my people who are called by my name in times of war shall repay and turn to me. Humble themselves and seek my face. And pray. I will hear them. I will forgive them. I will heal their land. Is that not the word of God? Now, Christians have made up their minds to seek the Lord. To live righteously before him. Ministers have made up their minds to preach the true world. And get people out of sin and Satan. To serve the living God. God will not have mercy upon us. Although not in all in the majority. But Lord a remnant of your people have arisen. To halt your righteousness. Will you forget your remnant? Is it not you Lord that says. If you find 50 people in Sodom and Gomorrah you will spare the land. Is it not you Lord that said. If you find 40 people in Sodom and Gomorrah you will spare the land. Is it not you, Lord, that said, if you find 20 people in Sodom and Gomorrah, you will spare the land? Is it not you that said, if you find 10 people in Sodom and Gomorrah, you will spare the land? Now, O oh Lord, the remnant of arisen to serve you, Lord, to observe your holiness, to be faithful to your word, to practice holiness, righteousness, and to worship you in all purity. For our sake, you will spare this land. Ah, for our sake, oh Lord, oh Lord, for our sake, you will rise up and answer and give peace to this land. You will rise up, you will give victory unto us over our enemies. You will rise up and fight for us. Angels will come down and take over our nation. Angels will come down and take over the battle in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Jehoshaphat, number six, presented the problem before the Lord. And the plan of the enemy nation. He presented this case before the Lord. Look at it in verse 10 and 11. Second Chronicles chapter 20. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab. Amon Seir, 
whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade. When they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy, thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. That's the problem. They have, they, our enemies have come up. And have spoken threatening words. Saying they will wipe us out. Saying Christians shall never rule. Saying we shall be slaves. To people of other religion. Saying Jesus name should be silenced in this nation. Saying that we should die. We and our ministers. God, that's the situation. Now they have come up with a letter saying we should not worship in three months. That they have power, O oh Lord King of power. Unto you belongeth power. Hey, come on, man! Come on, man! Come on, man! Let the earth open and you sink into it. Come on, man will come to say. They will stop worship of Jehovah. That we should not be before you to worship. Oh Lord, this is the problem. Yes, this is the problem. Ah. That is it. Hezekiah also presented his letter before the Lord. You remember it. Hezekiah also presented his letter before the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 8 to 20. Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 8 to 20. So, Rabshake returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Lipna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish, and he had said concerning Tahika, King of Ethiopia, he is come forth to make war with thee. And when he had it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trusted, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly. And shall thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed as Gozan and Haran and Rezeth and the children of Eden which were in Telazar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Aphat and the king of the city of Safavim? Hena and Iva and Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord and spread the letter, spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubim, Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacher, which had said, had said to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have led waste all nations and their countries, and have cast their gods into the fire, for there were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have, no, they, they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only, then Isaiah the son of Amos sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus yet the Lord God of Israel, whereas thou 
was prayed unto me against an Arab king of Assyria. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, had despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem had shaken her head at thee. You know, it's children of God that think that God is so weakly that when the enemy spoke like this, you fall your tail. Answer back the letter of those terrorists. Tell them they shall not be alive, all of them. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. They shall not be alive. Any one of them that mean business shall die before that time. Yeah. We have God. Serving the living God. I say, serving the living God. Serving the living God. We are serving the living Jesus. Serving the living Jesus. Serving the living Jesus. Amen. The Lord said, Go and answer the king of Assyria. Tell them, yes. Yeah, if just one of the children of Zion is shaking his head and say, Who are you, king of Assyria? Who are you? Speaking like that. We laugh you. We laugh at you. No strength is in you. No power is in you. You're fooling yourself. Now, see the Lord answering that person. Yeah. He said, Verse 23. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on her, even against the Holy One of Israel? Whom have these terrorists written that letter to? Even the Holy One of Israel. They have written that letter to God. They have written that letter to the Creator. They are stubborn to the Creator. Fire from heaven. I said, fire from heaven shall consume them and all the forces that are behind them in this country and outside this country they shall die they shall collapse they shall be destroyed they shall be ridden do they know the person behind christianity is it a weakling lower than their gods lower than their prophets lower than their leaders is the almighty the creator. Yes. That is what the Lord is saying. He said. By, by thy servants. Thou reproached the Lord. There is a man behind this thing. There is a man that employed these people. The Lord is taking them. And his days are numbered. The man that brought all these terrorists to this country. His days are numbered. The people that brought these terrorists to come and do this thing, their days are numbered. By their servants, thou hast reproached the Lord. And I said, by the multitude of my chariots, I might come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and I will cut down the cedar trees thereof, and the choice fair trees thereof, and I will enter into the height of his border. And the forest of the camel, I have digged and drunk water. And with the fall of my feet, have I dried up all the rivers of besieged places. That's what the, 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 the king of Assyria is boasting himself. He said, yes, I've gone to all lands. I've overcome all places. I've drowned, I've hewn, I've, I've broken down cities. I've deported people to various areas. I did it. I did it. When the Bukhanaza began to say, I, what happened to him? The Most High reigned upon the kingdoms of men. He became an animal. For seven years. Until he came to his senses, the Most High reigned upon the kingdoms of men. And give it to whomsoever he will. Not political, not political sci uh, signs. Not scheming. God will give presidency to somebody he has chosen already. Everything will play to the hand of that man. And the man will carry out his purpose. Hallelujah. The Lord now is saying, you're busted. 
Has that not heard long ago how I have done it and of ancient times that I, I, that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou shouldest be to lay waste defense cities into ruinous heaps? Therefore, their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops and as corn blasted before it be grown up. The Lord says, see, I allowed you, I sent you to those people. I wanted to wipe them out. That's why I sent you there. And when you went, they had no power. They couldn't withstand you. I took away power from them. That's why you were able to win them. I did it. You didn't know that I did it. It was I that did it. Because they offended me. Because they were doing evil against me. I sent you against them. And now you're going to make noise and say you did it. Are you going to make noise? That you did it. Therefore, he said, But I knew thy abode. And thy going out. And thy coming in. And thy rage against me. I know the anger you are exercising against me. You think you are doing it against Christians? It's against the Lord. It's against your creator. That you are doing that thing to. You think you are doing it against the man of God. It's against the Lord. It's against Jesus himself. Because the man of God is not speaking for himself. He's speaking for Jesus the creator. Whom you are reproaching. The Lord shall show himself. The Lord shall appear for your damnation. Yeah. Because thy rage against me and thy tumult is come up into mine ears, therefore will I put my hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way which thou comest, and this shall be a sign unto thee. He said, He has told them, I am going now. It, it, I, I have heard, no, it has reached its peak. Now, oh Lord, the voice of the enemies in Nigeria has reached its peak. Oh Lord, the plan of the enemies in Nigeria against your children have reached its peak. Lord, put a hook in their mouth. In the name of Jesus. To assure his people, I am going to give you liberty. I am going to give you victory. He said, this is a sign. They have surrounded you for about two years. I'm going to do miracle. One, they are going to scatter now. Two, you won't farm for two years. You will just be eating things that will grow from the ground. I will just want you to rest. Rest and recover. Prosperity all the way. That's what the Lord said. He said, and this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year, such as groweth of itself. And the second year, that which springeth of the same. And in the third year, so ye reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. Because life shall be over. Nobody is deporting you to anywhere. And the remnant that is escaped from the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. These people that are still at little now, little that have started this thing and have come up to righteousness and holiness, I'm going to spread them around worldwide. Ha ha ha! I will spread them. They shall be growing high and they will be spreading around the world. I have time for you. Nothing will happen to you. Yeah. Praise the Lord! Yeah. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they, shall, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, doth see the Lord concerning the king of Assyria he shall not come into this city nor shoot an arrow there will not come before it with shields nor cast a bang against it by the way that he came by the same shall he return and shall come into his cities and shall not come into this city said the Lord for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of the Lord went forth. And smote the camp of the Assyrians. A, a hundred and four score. One hundred and eighty. Eighty five thousand. And when they arose in the morning. Behold. They were all dead corpses. Amen. 
The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. Amen. So, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned. And dwelled at Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshipping the house of this rock, his God, that Adramelech and Shereza, his son, smote him with a sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. In his stead. The man died. Angels are there. Listen. You don't need weapons because the weapons that God will supply are not on earth. They are coming from heaven. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They are not flesh and blood. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And they are coming from heaven. So we don't need weapons. In Jesus name. Amen. But just one angel. When angel. The battle shall be fought silently. Listen. From now people. In fact they have been dying before. They shall multiply among these people. They shall multiply among these people. Angels shall do the work. Angels shall do the work. You just find that everything is silent. How did it silence? They have died. The enemy has died. They have died. God will handle it. Yeah. Go back to Second Chronicles chapter 20 and see how the matter ended. Jehoshaphat demanded divine intervention and salvation for the glory of the name of the Lord. Yes. Look at it in verse, in verse 13. I'm in, in verse 13. In verse 12, rather. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. The God of battle, Jehovah, the man of war, took over the matter. Jehovah, the man of war, Took over the matter. You want to know him more? In the book of Exodus chapter 15. I'm talking to you about Jehovah. The man of war. Hey. Who taught people how to battle? Who's, who won over Satan in the battles of heaven? Yes. In verse 1. I read. Then sang Moses. The children of Israel. Um, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying I will sing unto the Lord for he had triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea the Lord is my strength and song he is become my salvation he is my God and my salvation he is my, my God and I will prepare him an habitation my father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariot and his horse. Has he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. The right, thy, thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath Dashed in pieces the enemy. Thy right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in power. Right hand, O oh Lord, hath dashed in pieces thine enemy. Thy right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in power. Hath dashed in pieces thine enemy. They were rejoicing. Yes, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble, 
And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floor stood upright as an heap, and the, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My loss shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. The sun has lit in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises? Doing wonder. The Lord will do wonder. Yes. That is it. The Lord took over the battle against the enemies of his people. He gave them weights of encouragement. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 14. He gave them weights of of encouragement and strength. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thou seest the Lord unto you. Be not, be, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the brook. Therefore, the wilder, I mean, uh, before the wilderness of Jeruel, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not. Nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. Don't be a fearful people. Don't be a fearful people. Tell one another. Tell one another. Hey Christian don't be a fearful people. Brother don't be a fearful man. Sister don't be a fearful woman. The Lord has taken over the battle. Don't listen to what the people are saying. The Lord will fight the battle for us. The Lord will do the thing for us. Don't be fearful. Be courageous. Be courageous. Move forward. Hallelujah. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. The Lord told them what to do. And they began to do it. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Kohites stood up to praise the Lord. God of Israel with a loud voice on high and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper you would say you don't believe in revelation you will not prosper you who say you don't believe in God using prophets prophetess Speaking by visions and revelation and dream. You will not prosper. Repent of your sin. Otherwise God himself will be angry with you. And we, he had consulted with the people. He appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord. For his mercy endured forever. And when they began to sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon. Moab and Monsir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up and against the children of Monsir, and utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. Hallelujah. You know, the children of two men who were related to Israel were the one causing this problem. The children of Moab and Ammon were children of Lot who stayed with Abraham. The children of Monsir were children of Esau who was a twin brother to Jacob. Envy and jealousy is the one causing this problem. They were wiped out. Why are they prospering? Why? Why did they take over our God? Wipe them out! The Lord, uh, the Lord played politics among them. <laughs> 
The Lord played politics among them. Let, let's, say, let's say it like that. In the sense of this. The children of Moab and Ammon are children of one man. Somebody of the tribe of Esau offended. He said, eh? Eh? What are you showing yourself to be? You're, you're of the tribe of Esau. We are, we are children of one man. We will deal with you. We will deal with you. Before you know it, two of these soldiers, tribe Moab and Ammon, gathered, children of one man gathered against the children of Esau and cleared out all of them. Then, Moab is the firstborn. Ammon is the secondborn. What really happened between them? It was a problem of who is of seniority. In a general brother and elder brother, they have been fighting. Have you noticed that? So something happened. Whatever happened, it's only God that will explain. This, eh? we are the elders. You must respect us. We are the elders. Who are you elders? Who, who fight more? Who fought more in this battle? Eh? You say, what I say? Bah, bah. Hey, kur, 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 kur. They cleared themselves. <gasps> Jehovah is the man of war. He will handle them. I watch these terrorists destroyed by the power of the living God. I see the trees of the forest felled upon them. I see the, the stones of the mountain rolling upon them. I see the snakes of the field biting them. I see the wind coming with sicknesses and plagues to die, to clear them out. The Lord will clear. Angels come entering into their rooms. One die, one sleeping and never wake up. 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 And never wake up. The, the Lord is a man of woe. More than that. The Lord will reward his trusting children with riches and wealth. Yes. Yes. He will reward them. In verse 24. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling into the earth, and none escaped. All the money they came with, all the foodstuff they came with, the special cloth they came wearing during that time. Everything is called spoil. So the, the children of Judah were now gathering spoil. Yes. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance rich, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three days in gathering of the spoil it was so much a great crowd went to be gathering riches everybody carry to your house <laughs> everybody carry to your house and they spent three days carrying wealth to their house the man that has seven children how many, how much wealth? More than the school fees. <laughs> more, more than everything. They carry to the... Three days! On the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Berica. Berica. For there, they blessed the Lord, therefore. Bless the Lord. Therefore, the name of the place, the name of the same place, was called the valley of Berica. Unto this day, a clap of friend to the Almighty. The matter is over. The matter is over. Hallelujah. The matter is over. Rise up upon your feet. The matter is over. Worship your God. Wealth is coming upon Christians in this nation. Wealth. You have been deprived of this for too long. Hallelujah. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah is the man of war. Yes, as the Lord is speaking concerning the country Nigeria, He is also speaking concerning your country, brother. Commit that country to God. The noise of the enemies will be silenced. The trait of the enemy will be silenced. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. Worship your majesty. We believe you. We believe you. You have done it. You have settled the matter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. I say no religion, I say no boy, I say no terrorist, I say no boy. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? And who can battle with the Lord? I say no boy. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say no more. I say no power. I say no power. I say no president. I say no more. I say no governor. I say no more. I say no terrorist. I say no more. I say no witch cannot. I say no more. I say no demon. I say no body. I say Satan cannot. I say no body. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say no body. No body. I say no body. No body. I say no body. No body. I say nobody. 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 I
The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior, I believe in you, you are the living Savior, you can Say
Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. Savior. Jesus, I believe. 